So now we move on to the next topic, which is conversion of solid from one shape to another. So how can you convert a solid from one shape to another? Well, a very simple way is simply punching that object and maybe it undergoes some deformation. Apart from that, you can make use of your molds. Um, you must have used clay in your childhood. You can easily uh, convert it into different shapes. Uh, you can also subject your object to certain physical changes. But how exactly does it work in math? So for that, we have an example over here of a candle. So let's say I'm having a candle. It's made out of solid wax. And uh, let's say this is the original shape. Okay, it looks like a cube or a cuboid. And now I heat it. So on heating it, obviously any solid would start melting. So it melts. Uh, so on melting, this solid wax converts into molten wax. Okay, which you also call your liquid wax. Now what do we do with this? We cool it, but in this container B. So we know that liquids, they take up the shape of the container in which they are kept. So your candle will now turn from this shape of a cube or a cuboid to another shape, which is actually a cylinder. But in this process, you tell me one thing, the amount of wax in the candle would still remain the same. So this shape A or shape B, regardless of the shape, the volume of the candle would remain the same, which is to say that volume of shape A is same as volume of shape B. So this is the principle of conversion. You have to keep this in mind when applying this to your questions. That the principle of conversion is that when you're converting a solid from one shape to another, the volume remains constant. The volume does not change. So the volume remains constant when you're converting a solid from one shape to another, as we've seen in this case. Now you can try this with another example, okay? So at home, maybe your parents don't allow you to melt wax, your candle and all. So what you can do is you can try it with ice. So take an ice cube, okay, if it's present in your freezer. So you take that ice cube and um, you place it in, say, a bottle cap or in a bowl. So it will take up the shape of that container. But you'll realize that the shape has changed, but the volume would still remain the same. With ice also, the same changes are going to uh, take place, the same physical changes. First, ice will melt into water. Uh, the only difference is that candle, you need to heat. But here, at room temperature itself, ice would turn to water. And then you can keep it in whichever container you want to. And then, even if you want to freeze it, you can do so. And you'll see that the volume will turn out to be the same. Of course, at your level, you won't be able to do so. But we'll see that happening in questions. So you've been given a cone of height 24 centimeters. So we have a cone over here. So the height of this cone is what? 24 centimeters. The radius of its base is 6 centimeters. And uh, it has been converted to a sphere now. So sphere will have some radius. So you have to find out this radius. So here we are having a cone which has been converted to what? A sphere. The radius is 6, the height is 24, both being centimeters. Here, let's say the radius is r dash, so that is question mark. The principle of conversion is that the volume will remain the same. So, volume of cone is equal to volume of your sphere. So, volume of cone is what? It is 1 by 3 pi r square h. What is the volume of sphere? That is 4 by 3 pi r cube, but write it as pi r dash cube. Here, 3, 3 cancels, pi, pi cancels. So you're having r square h. So that is 6 square into 24 is equal to 4 into r dash cube. So 4, 6 are. So you get r dash cube as 6 cube. If you take cube root on both sides, you will get r dash as 6 centimeters. So this is the radius of your sphere, 6 centimeters. This is your answer. Then um, we've been given an overhead tank, which is in the shape of a cylinder. So we have this overhead tank in the shape of a cylinder and we are filling this uh, tank with water from a sump. Okay, so this uh, sump refers to an underground tank and it is in the shape of a cuboid. So I'm having a cuboid over here. Okay, and I'm trying to fill water. Okay, from uh, this sump and it's entering my cylinder. So this uh, cuboid is having these dimensions. So um, your cuboid 
is having L equal to 1.57 meter, B equal to 1.44 meter and height equal to 95, point, 95 centimeters. So this is in centimeters, you can convert it also to meters, it becomes 0 0.95 meters. Then we have uh, this cylinder. So this cylindrical tank has what radius? 60 centimeters, it's given in the question and height equal to 95 centimeters. So convert this radius and um, height also in meters. So this will become 0 0.6 and 0 0.95 meters respectively. Why um, am I doing this conversion? Because I want to keep the same units. And how am I doing this conversion? I'm making use of the fact that 1 meter equal to 100 centimeter. So 1 centimeter equal to 1 by 100 meter. Simple unitary method and that's how you get it. So you have to find out the height of the water left in the sump after the overhead tank has been completely filled with water. So initially my sump was filled with water. So volume of water in sum will be what volume of cuboid only so if this tank is fully filled then uh, the water will occupy the volume of cuboid because water will take up this uh, the shape of the container in which it is kept so this will be l into b into a so that will be 1.57 into 1.44 into 0 0.95 these many meter cube is the volume of water in the sum. Now um, they are saying volume of your cylinder. So what will be the volume of cylinder when it is uh, full with water or filled with water? So when this cylinder is filled with water, in that case also water will take up the shape of the container which will be the cylinder. So here you will have volume of cylinder. So it's going to be pi r square h. Pi you have to take as 3.14. So it will be 3.14 into r square. That will be what? 0 0.6 square into the height which is going to be what? 0 0.95. So again the volume will be in meter cube. So now what will be the volume of water? left in the sum when your cylinder is full. So I told you that from this sum which is actually a cuboid we are transferring water to a cylindrical tank. Okay so we calculate the volume of the sum when it was completely filled with water then we calculated volume of cylinder when it was completely filled with water. Now you have to subtract the two and that will tell you how much water will be left in this sum now. Okay, how much water will be there in this sum? Okay, the height is what uh, we need to calculate actually, height of this water. So, uh, to calculate this, you have to do volume of sum minus volume of your cylinder. So, what was the volume of cuboid? LBH, volume of cylinder was pi r square h. So, just substitute those values over here. So, this volume of sum will be 1.57 into 1.44 into 0.95. And from this, you are subtracting the volume of cylinder, which was 3.14 into 0 0.6 into 0 0.6 into 0 0.95. So when you calculate this, you will get the volume of water left in the sum. Now you have to find out the height of this water. So you know that height will be what? Volume of water which is left upon length into breadth. Because height, you are actually finding out the height of the cuboid. So V for a cuboid is equal to LBH. So if you make H a subjective formula, you'll get V upon LB. So volume of water left is this. You divide it by your length into breadth, which is 1.57 and 1.44. So when you solve for this, you will get your answer as 0 0.475 meters. Simply uh, perform this difference. Okay, you perform uh, the multiplications in these brackets. And then you take the difference, substitute it over here. Divided by 1.57, 1.44, you get 0.475 meters as your height of water left in the sum. Now, you can convert this meters into centimeter. We know that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter. So, that will give you 0 0.475 meter as 0 0.475 into 100. That is 47.5 centimeter. So, this is the height of water left in the sum. Now, you have to compare the capacity of the tank with that of sum. I told you whenever we talk about capacity, that means you have to calculate the volume. So you basically need to do volume of tank, which is actually a cylinder upon volume of sum, which is actually a cuboid. So capacity means volume and whenever they ask you to compare, 
so comparison always involves the ratio so we take the two ratios so volume of tank was 3.14 into 0.6 into 0.6 into 0.95 and write here the volume of sum that was 1.57 into 1.44 into 0.95 both will be in meter cube so the final answer will be devoid of any units so it will turn out to be 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 so if I take this um, ratio I'm getting volume of sum in the denominator this is 1 by 2 this is volume of tank upon volume of sump is 1 by 2 I can take this volume of sump in the numerator on the RHS so I'll get volume of tank as 1 by 2 of volume of sump so we can say that this is the comparison of the capacities of your tank with that of the sump so now you have been given a copper rod of diameter 1 cm length 8 cm you're drawing it into a wire now obviously um, my rod will be having a greater diameter than a wire a wire is very thin right that means its thickness or its uh, diameter is very less so it will be very long though but its diameter will be less so this is what this is my rod and this is my wire so both rod and wire are what they are cylinders that means they will have some radius they will have some height so here they've said that the diameter is 1 centimeter so it means radius will be 0 0.5 centimeters and uh, what is given about the length here so length will be the height only in this case if you look carefully so here h is equal to 8 centimeters so here they've said that um, the wire is of length 18 meter so that means that your h is equal to 18 meter but since the other two quantities I have taken in centimeters so I'll do 18 into 100 by because 1 meter is 100 centimeters so that will give me 1800 centimeters so this is my h so here also I'm having h here also I'm having h let me make this h dash and here we want to find out the thickness of the wire which means you have to find out its d so d dash or you may say r dash is question mark so using that principle of conversion the volume will still remain the same even if the shape has changed so volume of rod will be equal to volume of wire both of which individually are cylinders only so the volume of a cylinder is pi r square h so it will be pi r square h and here i'll have pi r dash square h dash pi pi cancels here what is the radius that is 0 0.5 so i'll have 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 into my height is 8 it is equal to r dash square into h dash is 1800 so when you solve for this you can write this uh, 0 0.5 as 1 by 2 actually so this will cancel so you will get a 2 this will be r dash square into 1800 this will cancel this will become 900 so you will get r dash square as 1 upon 900 so if you take square root on both sides you'll get r dash as 1 upon 30 the unit will be what centimeters everything we have taken in centimeters but to find out the thickness of the wire we are actually referring to uh, calculation of the diameter of this wire so that was d dash you know what is the relation between diameter and radius your diameter is twice of radius so it will be twice of r dash 2 into 1 upon 30 centimeters so the thickness of the wire will turn out to be 1 upon 15 centimeters so then you have been given a hemispherical tank so you know this is how a hemisphere looks like and you are emptying it by a pipe so a pipe is a cylinder and uh, you want to see that how much time will it take to empty this tank so initially it is full of water so that means uh, this water when it is uh, completely filling your hemisphere the volume of water will be same as volume of hemisphere so what is the uh, volume of hemisphere it is 2 by 3 pi r cube so we need to know this parameter radius for the hemisphere so uh, they have said that the diameter is 3 meters so here d is equal to 3 meter so you can find out radius it will be diameter upon 2 that will be 3 by 2 meters or you can write this as 1.5 meters so basically you're going to empty it and then you're going to get a hemisphere which is half empty okay half empty means it looks like this so you want to see that how much time will it take for this conversion all right so first let me find out the volume of the tank the hemispherical tank will be 2 by 3 pi r cube so pi is 22 by 7 r cube will be 3 by 2 whole cube so when you calculate this volume it will turn out to be 99 upon 14 meter cube 
cube because volume is having the unit you know, distance cube and meter cube because everything we've taken in meters. Now volume of water to be emptied. You don't have to empty the whole tank. You just have to empty half of the tank. So the volume of water that you are going to empty will be half times the volume of your tank. So it will be half of 99 upon 40. Unit will still be meter cube. So this will become 99 upon 28 meter cube. Now uh, I can write uh, my meter cube in liters because here the rate is given in terms of liters per second. So what is the conversion for meter cube into liters? So 1 meter cube is actually equal to 1000 liters. So I can multiply this by 1000. So I'll get 99 upon 28 into 1000 liters. So uh, students often make this uh, careless mistake that they take liters as this. So actually the liter is represented like this. It's a capital L and not a small L. So just don't make that mistake. So when you uh, do this, you will get 99,000 upon 28 liters. So this much volume of water has to be emptied. Now you have been given the rate of emptying the tank, rate of emptying the tank. So from the question, you've been given a mixed fraction. If you look here, three whole number four upon seven. So that will give you the improper fraction three into seven plus four, that is 25 by seven. The rate of emptying the tank is 25 by seven liters per second. So the unit will be liter upon second. Now that means that for 25 upon seven, liters the tank um, so 25 upon 7 liter of water is being emptied in one second so how much time will 99,000 upon 28 liter take so by simple unitary method that will take 1 upon 25 upon 7 into 99,000 upon 28 so this 7 will go up actually and this 4 will get cancelled so you'll have 99,000 upon 25 into 4. So uh, 25 fours is 100. So let me write it here. So 99,000 upon 100. So here you will get 990 seconds. Okay, so if 25 by 7 liter is being emptied in one second, then this much volume of water which is to be emptied, that is half the volume of tank, will be emptied in how many seconds? We calculated this by making use of unitary method and we got 990 seconds. Can we convert seconds into uh, minutes? Yes, we can. You know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So that gives you one second equal to one upon 60 minutes. So simply divide this seconds by minutes. So 990 upon 60. So that will be your answer in minutes and that will turn out to be 16.5 minutes. So 16 and a half minutes would be required to empty this hemisphere, to half empty this hemisphere by making use of this pipe. So now I'll acquaint you with a very important solid, which is actually a part of a cone that is frustum. So how do you get this part frustum of a cone? So for that, you need to consider a cone like this. Now, what is its base? This, this highlighted region is its base. Uh, needless to say, this uh, base is circular. Now I take a plane which is parallel to this base. So this plane is taken parallel to the circular base. And then I slice this cone into two parts. So I get part number one and I get part number two. So what do you notice here? That part one is still a cone. The only difference is that it is a smaller cone than the original cone. Now what about this second part? Now this is also a solid. It is a new solid. So this is called a frustum of a cone. So this part is the frustum of a cone. So it looks like this. Try drawing it in your notebooks also. So it also has a circular base and a circular top. But the thing here is that the circular top and base by virtue of being circles would be having their own respective radii. But the two radii are different. Clearly, you can see that if this radius is called R1 and this is called R2, then your R1 will be greater than R2. Now, uh, try to locate, uh, locate some frusta around your... Um, now, uh, frustum has the plural frusta. So, I request you to see some frusta around you, spot them and then um, tell me also. So, um, some examples of uh, frusta would be your bucket it could be your glass in fact many utensils that you use in your kitchen all of them look like a frustum of a cone 
So this shape is very important and uh, uh, this consists of three parts. Okay, you have a circular top, you have this part which I have highlighted shaded over here and you have a circular base. Remember that the two radii are different. Okay, they are unequal. And what about this word frustum? This word is actually a Latin word which means piece cut off. It's actually true because we get this frustum by cutting off a piece from the cone. Alright. So now like uh, other solids that we've discussed so far, we'll be calculating the surface area and volume for this special solid as well. So let's take the height of this frustum as H. Now it's got two circles. We have a circular base. Let's say it has radius R1. This circular top, uh, let's say it has radius R2. And like a cone, this frustum also has a slant height, which we are denoting by L over here. So here you see that R1 is greater than R2. So in that case, we can find out your slant height as under root of H square plus R1 minus R2 whole square. How? To find out this slant height, if you remember for a cone, we took a cone like this. The height was H, the radius was R. So this angle was 90 degree for a right circular cone. So we made use of Pythagoras theorem in this triangle and we got this slant height L as under root of R square plus H square. So here also spot a triangle. So this is a triangle over here. So this height will still remain H. But what can you say about this distance? This distance will become R1 minus R2. Why am I not uh, taking it as R2 minus R1? Because R1 is greater than R1. Therefore, I'm taking the difference like R1 minus R2. So like here, slant height was L equal to under root R square plus H square. Here instead of R, we are having R1 minus R2 whole square where R1 is greater than R2. So that is the only difference. So that will enable you to learn this formula. So just compare with the formulas that you got for a cone. Then like a cone, this will also have curved surface area. Now what was the curved surface area for a cone? It was pi R L. So instead of R here, we are going to take R1 plus R2. So this time we are not doing R1 minus R2. We are taking the sum of the two radius. So that is R1 plus R2. What about the total surface area? I told you that this cone, uh, the frustum of a cone has three parts. Circular top, circular base and this region. So this region is having your curved surface area denoted by CSA. TSA stands for total surface area. So then you take the CSA that is pi times R1 plus R2 into L. To that you'll add area of the circular top which will be pi R2 whole square. Area of a circle is what pi R square. So here the radius is R2 for the circular top. What is the radius for the base? It is R1. So the area of the circular base would be pi R1 square. You add all of them and that is how you get the total surface area. And then what about volume of frustum? So if you remember the volume of a cone was 1 by 3 pi r square h. So here also we are having this uh, 1 by 3 pi h term. But instead of r square, we are having r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 r2. So please learn all these formulas. They'll come in very handy when you're solving the questions. So here we have an example. So um, this is a cone right now. And... Uh, here we have a frustum of the cone. So this shaded region, if you remove this from the cone, you get this frustum. Okay, this A, B, D, C, this is a frustum of a cone. So this has height H equal to 45 centimeters and the two radii. So uh, I told you that a frustum will have a circular top and a circular base and the two radii for the two would be different. So uh, let me call the longer radii as R1. So by convention, I'll take the longer one as R1 and the smaller one as R2, you have to find out its volume, the curved surface area and the total surface area. So I know H, R1 and R2, but I also need to find out the slant height, the slant height L. So to find this, what was the formula? It was under root of H square plus R1 minus R2 whole square. So quickly plug in the values of H, R1 and R2. So it's going to be 45 square plus 28 minus 7 whole square. So this is going to be 2025. 28 minus 7 is 21. 21 square will be 441. So this will give you under root of 2466. If you do this, um, if you take the square root, your slant height will be approximately equal to 49.65 centimeters. So now we have L also as 49.65 centimeters. So it will be very simple. You have to find out the volume first of all. So the volume is 1 by 3 pi h into R1 square 
plus r2 square plus r1 into r2. So let's quickly substitute. You have to take pi as 22 by 7. So 1 by 3 into 22 by 7 into what is h? It is 45. What is r1 square? 28 square. What is r2 square? 7 square and 28 into 7 will be r1 into r2. So now this 3 and 15 will go off. So here you are having 22 by 7 into 15 and inside you are having these terms. So um, this turns out to be 1029. This will go off by 7 as 147. And when you um, solve this volume, 22 into 15 into 147, you will get 48,510. The unit will be distance cube and all the distances have been measured in centimeters. So the volume of this cone is 48,510 centimeters cube. Uh, please know that sometimes we write centimeter cube as cc also, cubic centimeters. So that means the same thing. You call it centimeter cube or you call cube first the so cubic centimeters. Then we need to find out the curved surface area and the total surface area. So what is the formula for curved surface area of the frustum of a cone? It is pi times r1 plus r2 into l. Which value of pi will I use? 3.14? No. I will be using 22 by 7. It will be given to you in the question most of the times. Into R1 plus R2. So that is going to be 28 plus 7. Into the slant height we calculated it as 49.65. Because it is area so the units will be centimeter square here. So it will become 22 by 7 into 35 into 49.65. So 7 fives are. So when you do 22 into 5 we will get 110 into 49.65. So when you solve for this you will get the curved surface area of your cone as 5461.5 centimeters square. So this is the curved surface area of the cone. Now curved surface area is sometimes also called as lateral surface area. So don't get confused that what is this? Uh, I didn't teach you this term. So it's lateral surface area. It's same as curved surface area. What about the total surface area? I can denote it by TSA. So it will be the curved surface area which you've already calculated plus area of the circular top and the area of the circular bottom which is going to be pi r1 square plus pi r2 square. The curved surface area was 5461.5. Let me take this pi common. Inside I'll get r1 square plus r2 square. So 5461.5. Pi as 22 by 7. r1 square will be 28 square. r2 square will be 7 square. So when you solve for this, your end result will be 8079.5 centimeter square. So again, it will be in centimeter square because we are calculating area. So um, now... We are talking about uh, processing your sugarcane juice. So then you get some byproducts in the process. So uh, you get uh, molasses, you get jaggery. So uh, they've taken these molasses and they've poured them into molds. So these molds look like this. I told you that if you try to locate some frusta in your house, you'll definitely get at least some containers which look like one. So this container is in the shape of a frustum if you look carefully. So um, it will have two diameters for the two circular faces, so 30 and 35 centimeter. So by convention, let me take my D1, the longer one, so that is 35 centimeters and my D2 is 30 centimeters. Please note here you've been provided with the diameters and not with the radii directly, but no worries because radius is equal to D by 2. So with this, you get R1 as 35 by 2 centimeters and you get R2 as 30 by 2, that will be 15 centimeters. What else is given to us? The vertical height of the mold. That means H is also given to us as 14 centimeters. So if each centimeter cube of molasses has mass about 1.2 grams, you have to find the mass of the molasses that can be poured into each mold. So you have to find out the total mass in the question. Okay, and how will you get it? You've been given that one centimeter cube has mass 1.2 gram. So V centimeter cube, which is the volume, would be occupying how many grams? Okay, it will have how much mass. So to calculate that, you need to find out the volume of this frustum. Indirectly, that is what they are asking for. So to find out the volume, you will make use of the formula V equal to 1 by 3 pi h into r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 r2. So here you need not calculate the slant height of your frustum because uh, L is not mentioned anywhere in the, uh, in the volume formula. So V is equal to 1 by 3. What is pi? It is 22 by 7. What is H? It is this 14 centimeters. R1 square will be 35 by 2 whole square. This will be 15 square as R2 square. And what will be R1, R2? It will be 35 by 2 into 15. So when you solve this entire bracket, you will get your answer as 11641.7 centimeter cube. 
okay because we're talking about volume so the answer will be in centimeters cube but this is not it so by unitary method we know that one centimeter cube is occupying 1.2 gram okay this is the mass so if i'm having the total volume as 11641.7 centimeter cube why am i taking this volume of molasses because uh, these molasses have been kept in this container so by virtue of being a liquid it would uh, take up the shape of your container only so the volume of molasses will be the same as volume of your frustum of cone so that is 11641.7 centimeters cube make use of unitary method so the total mass for this much volume will be 1.2 upon 1 into 11641.7 and the answer would be in grams only so when you solve for this you will get 13970.04 grams now can you convert it into kg but for that you require the formula so one kilogram is equal to thousand grams so by unitary method we can say one gram is equal to how many kilograms one upon thousand so just divide this by thousand and your answer will turn out to be in kilograms and it will become 13.97 kg approximately and you can further approximate this 13.97 as 14 kg it's very close to 14 so the mass of molasses that you can pour into each mold is 14 kilograms. Then um, even your bucket sometimes uh, can look like a frustum of a cone. So here we have a frustum, but in addition to this, we have another basic solid with which you're already familiar, which is a cylindrical base. So it's a very small cylinder, okay, which is forming the base of my bucket. So this is my cylinder and this is my frustum of what? Of a cone. So both of them are made up of the same sheet. So a frustum would have two diameters, so they are 45 and 25. So let me take D1 as the longer one. So D1 is 45 centimeters. Please tell me what is R1 from here. And D2 will be 25 centimeters. So please tell me what will be R2 here. You have to make use of the formula that radius is equal to D by 2. So it will give you 45 by 2 centimeters as D1. And your R2 will be 25 by 2 centimeters. So you've been given the total vertical height of the bucket is 40 centimeters. So this 40 centimeter is height of cylinder plus height of frustum. And they have provided you uh, with the cylindrical basis height that is six centimeters. So height of cylinder is given to you as six centimeters. So can I find out the height of frustum? So height will be 40 centimeter, which is the total height minus the height of cylinder, which is six centimeters. So it will turn out to be 34 centimeters. So this is for your frustum. This is the data that we get for frustum of your cone. But um, if you know R1, R2, you should find um, L also because here you need not uh, find volume first because they're first asking for the area that you will require. So to find any area for a frustum, you will require the knowledge of your slant height. So L is equal to what? It is equal to 8 square plus R1 minus R2 whole square. So it's going to be what? It will be 34 square plus R1 minus R2 means 45 upon 2 minus 25 upon 2 whole square. So when you solve for this, the slant height for the frustum of the cone will turn out to be approximately 35.44 centimeter. It will become uh, 34 square plus 10 square here under root obviously. So the answer will be somewhat around 35.44 centimeters. Uh, so this is for the frustum. Can you um, find out some data for cylindrical base as well? So for the cylinder, we've been given um, the height as six centimeters. And the radius will be the radius of this part, this circular base of the frustum. So obviously this radius is greater. So this would be corresponding to the diameter 45 centimeter and this would be having the diameter 25 centimeter. So the cylinder will also have the diameter 25 centimeter, which makes its radius as 25 upon 2, that is d by 2 centimeters. So now I know the data, I have the data for the frustum and for the cylinder. Can I uh, make use of them to um, find the area, the total area with the which, um, the total area of the metallic sheet with which you will be covering this bucket. So yes, we can do that very easily now. So area of sheet required they're using the same sheet, right, for the frustum and the cylinder. So it's going to be curved surface area of frustum. Plus it's going to be area of this circular base. Plus it's going to be area of this cylinder. All right, so to cover this entire bucket, we require to cover three areas, this frustum, 
this circular base and this cylinder. So for the cylinder, we are not taking the total surface area, but just the curved surface area. So what is the curved surface area of rustum? What is the formula for that? The formula is pi into R1 plus R2 into L. So that's why I was asking you to find out L. What is the area of circular base? It is pi r square. What is the curved surface area of cylinder? It is 2 pi r h. So here, this r is same as which r? Same as r2. Alright? And uh, what about this r? This r is also r2. So just uh, uh, write the subscripts properly over here. Now you can take uh, pi common. And inside you will get r1 plus r2. That is what? 45 by 2 plus 25 by 2 into L which we calculated as 35.44 plus you have R2 square so that will be 25 by 2 square plus you have 2 R2H because we've taken pi common so 2 into 25 by 2 into what was the what was the height of the cylinder that was 6 so when you solve all these brackets you put the value of pi as 22 by 7 your area will turn out to be 4860.9 centimeter square. In case you want to verify your answer, let me tell you that uh, this part will turn out to be 1240.4. This will be 156.25 and this will be 150. This is just to ensure that you don't go wrong. Okay, You can verify. So, the, But the total uh, area of the sheet required will be 4860.9 centimeter square. Centimeter because everything is in centimeters and square because area is unit distance square. But that's not it. You also have to find out the volume of water that the bucket can hold. So to find out the volume of um, water, you're basically finding out the volume of the entire bucket, right? So volume of but uh, volume of water that bucket can hold is same as saying the capacity of the bucket. Capacity, I told you whenever I use this term, it means the volume the capacity of bucket so what will be the capacity of bucket it's going to be volume of your frustum only okay because uh, we are not counting this okay it will just be the volume of frustum of this cone so you know the volume of frustum of cone is 1 by 3 pi h r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 into r2 so it will be 1 by 3 pi is 22 by 7 what is the height height was equal to what 34 centimeters into r1 square will be 45 by 2 whole square plus r2 square will be 25 by 2 whole square plus r1 into r2 will be 45 by 2 into 25 by 2. So when you compute this your um, final answer would look like 22 by 7 into 34 by 3. So um, inside you will get actually 943.75 if you solve these square brackets and when you solve this entire thing you will get 33,615.48 centimeter cube. Now uh, usually when we talk of uh, the capacity of any bucket if you have ever visited a market uh, you'll always see that uh, they tell the capacity in liters so you can make that conversion also. So um, one liter is actually equal to 1000 ml and which is equal to 1000 centimeter cube. Okay, so 1 centimeter cube by unitary method will be 1 upon 1000 liter. So 33,615.48 if you divide it by 1000, your answer will turn out to be in liters. And that will become approximately, if you round it off also, it will become 33.62 liters. So this is an approximate value for the capacity of your bucket or the volume of water that the bucket can hold. So with this, we come to an end of this chapter, surface area and volumes. So let's quickly recapitulate all that we've studied here. So um, quickly tell me, a cube, cuboid, cone, cylinder, sphere. Quickly tell me their surface areas and their volumes. So for the cube, what was the surface area? If edge length is A, so it's going to be 6 a square. Click quickly tell me the volume, it will be A cube. Cuboid, what will be the surface area? If I give you length, breadth, height as LBH respectively, it will be twice of lb plus bh plus hl uh, fill the volume over here what will be the volume the volume will be l into b into h for the cone what will be um, the curved surface uh, just tell me the total surface area it's going to be pi r l plus pi r square so here this pi r l is only the curved surface area so this is the total surface area how do you calculate l for a cone it is under root of r square plus h square tell me the volume of the cone 
and tell me the volume of a cylinder also. So for the cylinder, the volume was pi r square h. Just divided by 3, get the volume of cone as 1 by 3 pi r square h. What about the total surface area of a cylinder? It is 2 pi r h, which is the curved surface area of cylinder CSA. Plus, you will have 2 pi r square. There are two circular tops and bases if you add. So, you'll get 2 pi r square. What about the sphere? Very simple here. What will be the surface area? It's going to be 4 pi r square if the radius is r. What about the volume? It will be 4 by 3 pi r cube. Very good. Now, uh, we'll do the same thing for two more solids. Quickly do it for hemisphere. So, if you've understood it for a sphere, you can do it for a hemisphere also. So, I want you to fill the value for surface area and volume. Okay, just write the formulas for hemisphere. And then we'll quickly revise the frustum of a cone. So, for hemisphere, the surface area will be half times the surface area of sphere. So, it will be half of 4 pi r square, that is 2 pi r square. And let me see if you fill the volume correct. It should be 2 by 3 pi r cube. Now, talking about the frustum, so here there will be how many radii? 1 or 2. So, if I'm saying radii, it has to be 2 only, right? So, it's going to be R1 and R2. So, let me take R1 greater than R2. Apart from this, I'll require H and I'll require L. How do you calculate the slant height of a frustum? It is under root of H square plus R1 minus R2 whole square. So, instead of R square, we're just having R1 minus R2 whole square. Now, uh, can you tell me the total surface area of a frustum? It's going to be, or tell, tell me the curved surface area first. It's going to be pi into R1 plus R2 into L. So this is L. Okay, now throughout I'm asking, um, throughout I'm telling about, talking about pi. So what is this pi? It's got the value 22 by 7 or 3.14. It will usually be mentioned in the question which one you have to take. Now if you've uh, understood the curved surface area of frustum, can you tell me the total surface area? It will be the curved surface area plus area of a circular top and area of a circular base. So pi r1 square plus pi r2 square. Now, what can you say about the volume of your frustum of cone? That will be 1 by 3 pi h, but instead of r square, which we had for a cone, here we will have r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 r2. So, please make a table somewhere of all these formulas and then you'll be able to solve any question. Then you just have to make use of logic. So, um, talking about logic, we discussed a very important logic, which was uh, the principle of conversion. So, by conversion, we refer to converting a solid from one shape to another. So, what was not changing then? The volume was not changing. It remained constant. Okay. And that's how we could uh, calculate many parameters for different shapes then. Then, um, what do we mean by frustum of a cone? I've already written its formulas with you. But what does a frustum mean? How do you get it? So, you take a cone. In fact, um, after you finish this chapter, I want you to take a birthday cap. And make use of a pair of scissors and just cut it. And just tell me if you can get a frustum of a cone or not. So you take this cone, let me slice this part. Okay, how? You take a plane parallel to the base of this uh, cone. So then you will end up with this and a circular top and a circular bottom. This is your frustum. Okay, then uh, we also discussed that whenever we talk of capacity, what are we referring to? We are referring to the volume. Okay, now what was the unit of surface area throughout? It was like meter square. So, for volume, it was meter cube. So, be very careful over here. Then, uh, we also discussed some conversions that 1 liter is equal to 1000 centimeter cube. And what is 1 meter cube equal to 1000 liters? So it's very important that you know these conversions also because uh, maybe in the question they give you that give your answer in liters or give your answer in meter cube. So, if uh, you know these unit conversions, only then you'll be able to get your answer. So, that's it for this chapter. Thank you.